We're live. <gasps> we are. Live. This is scary. This is all new to me. I've never done this before. Oh, I'm uh, sure you've done it a few times. Ooh, okay. So I, I think I'm the host in this instance. So hi, everyone. Um, <laughs> I'm Cedric Phillips. Uh, I just lost the match to the person. Why do I have to play against someone who just beat me? Or commentate with someone who just beat me? That doesn't seem fair. I mean, to be fair, we had two good games. We did. We had two really good games, actually. Uh, he's Paul Chion, uh, known as Hounf on Twitter and on Magic Online. Uh, how are you, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. I, man, my, my brain kind of hurts. I, I was playing Miracles all day, testing for the Legacy GP, and now I had that grueling game against you. Oh, you must be exhausted, then. I am. I am, but... Oof. I don't even know if I played that second game. Like, that second game was, was really crazy. Yeah, so... With all, of, like, the... Like the casting and stuff that I do, I don't get to play as much anymore. Right. And I was just like, kind of, I'm gonna go rewatch a second game because I feel like I did something wrong. Like we probably did a bunch wrong on both sides. Because like the entire time, I'm like kind of trying to like look at your sideboard and be like, he's got all these options. This is really hard. Right. I don't really know which ones to play around. And like you can get pretty aggressive with like Dragonlord Salumgar. There was that turn where like I played Gideon and plussed it. I have no idea if that's right. Maybe I was supposed <laughs> to make an emblem. It's so hard. There's so many. Decisions. Yeah, yeah. Well, I had the four four token, so I, I know you had to think. But you know what's funny is you 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 po you wrote that article about the Naya Megamorph deck, and yeah. we were we, when we were testing for the Pro Tour, we were like, holy crap! I think Cedric might have broken it because we were like, rending volley is just insane. And okay. so, so, you know, I wasn't too happy with the, with the deck that, the Mentor deck, so I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to play Cedric's deck. So I actually played your deck at the GP, or at the Pro Tour. Did you, did you do okay? Uh, day one was pretty good. I went 5-5 five and five overall with the deck. I guess kind okay. of expected with, you know, kind of the deck everybody was basically trying to beat. But, uh, but, yeah, yeah, that makes it tough, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know, the red cards seem really good. Like, I don't, um... I'm I'm pretty sure Rending Volley is really good. I'm un it's unclear how good Dragmaster Outcast is from that deck. Like there's yeah. some sound thinking there, but I don't know if it's actually very good. Like in the in the match I just played against you, it's like I kinda wanna board it in, but then like I know you have Exert Influence and Dragon Lord Slumgar, so it's like how good is it really? Because if you take it, it's really hard for me to kill. So Yeah, uh yeah, the um the Radiant Flames and the Rending Volleys were good. The Dragon Master Outcast I found wasn't great because in the mirror basically everybody just brings in triple tragic arrogance. So okay. it's really hard to just kind of get out of hand with the outcast a lot of the time, I found. So, okay. I mean, it is a nice threat, but if everybody's just basically trying to set up this huge tragic arrogance, there's really not a whole lot you can do. That makes sense. That makes sense. All right, so oh, we, we got to cover a match now. We could we we talk, yeah. talk about Naya Megamore forever, but we have to cover uh, Gabby and ooh, Sean McLaren. All right. So this yeah, could yeah. be interesting here for match number three. Going to take a look at the deck list here. You can Gabby's bring up deck one is of sweet. them. Is Gabby's deck pretty cool? I got to get these deck lists in front of me. I haven't had a. Gr oh. I haven't had the proper amount of time to review because I've been a little yes. sick today. Right. So Gabby is playing the Eldrazi Ramp deck that recently top aided Grand Prix Quebec City. Okay, that's and... what Nello played. Okay. Yeah, 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 and <laughs> it's a nice one. Uh, I think it's a deck that basically was designed to prey upon kind of the mid range decks. But I, I think it's going to be pretty hard to beat any red decks. But fortunately, the only red deck in the field is Randy Bueller, who's an R-Pod. Oh, well, that's lucky. Yeah. So, so I know that Mondello top four at this tournament. He lost to Jeskai. He said his Jeskai matchup was really good, and I guess he was kind of crushing Jeskai throughout the course of the weekend. But when you run into it like five or six times, you're bound to lose to it at least once, just because that's how magic works. But this, uh, this deck like this deck list just looks, it just looks so different from anything else that anyone else is doing. Yeah, with yeah. all these ramp spells, and you've just got like all these lands, like this Sylvan Scrying package. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, you know, the, 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 this kind of reminded me, I, I played uh, a sim like a red-green ramp deck with Bogart and Hellkites. And okay. th this kind of reminds me of that deck. You're just playing a bunch of ramp spells, and you're basically just trying to get to Ulamog and Dragonlord of Tarka and Ugin. But I feel like you, this deck also ha can easily mulligan a lot, because, I mean, you're playing a deck with three 10 drops and four 8 drops in it. Uh, I think this deck is pretty prone to some disjointed draws. Like, when everything's <laughs> going good, your right. deck looks really good. And then when everything's going bad, your deck looks really bad. Oh, yeah. I'm sure the nut draws are pretty insane. And I think its plan against Control, or even Jeskai, is, you know, I mean, Ulamog is a 10-drop that can get countered. But you can, you can actually just chain Ulamogs with Sanctum of Ugin. So every time you cast an Ulamog, you can sack a Sanctum of Ugin to fetch another Ulamog. If, and basically, every time you cast Ulamog, you're just exiling two permanents every turn, and I think that's how you're supposed to get ahead. But I have no idea. I've never actually seen this deck in action, so I'm really excited to see, uh, see Gabby bust it out. 
Yeah, this is the kind of interesting thing about it is like we see it. We you know you look at the results of a grand prix and you see like the deck list and you're like, what's going on? I need to see someone play this deck because so, you can only kind of theorize it so much. So this will actually be pretty fun to watch on that side. And then for Sean's deck, Sean's deck is a little bit different too. He's playing green white retreat. So Sam Black kind of put like a return a retreat to um to a Myria deck in his like Bant deck. And I guess Sean has kind of cut the blue cards. He's just playing more of a green-white version. So um, I, our players are ready. I guess we can stop talking about it and actually see him if you want. I'm totally in. I don't even know what to expect. So this should be fun. Are we ready for this thing? We ready, Chion? I am. I am. All right. So let me ask you this. First of all, uh, Gabby's going to start by playing a forest. Who, who do you think wins? I think, um, uh, uh, sorry, Gabby's deck is likely favored in this matchup because Sean's deck really doesn't put a whole lot of pressure. It doesn't win until like turn six or seven, I think. And that's with like the nut draw, being able to play an early retreat. Or, 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 or does he even have Secure the Waste? No, he cut the Secure the Waste entirely. So mm -hmm. I don't think Sean's, Sean's deck can put enough pressure on Gabby's life total before Gabby just ramps up and plays an Ugin. Like, how does Sean's deck beat an Ugin that's been ramped out? Uh, there's no chance. It's, <laughs> exactly. It's, 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 game, it's game over, and she already has one in hand and is ramping with Map the Waste. It's weird because, like, the ramp spells right now... Like, like the, the two mana room spells, like they, they don't exist, right? Like, we're used to, like, far seek and rampant growth and stuff like that, and now you're kind of starting on three with your ramp. So Yeah, and map the waste of all... That, I mean, that card was barely playable and limited, and now it's, it's being played and constructed. It's crazy. When I saw it was in the deck, I definitely had to do a gatherer search, because I couldn't remember yeah. what it did. So like, map the waste... Because there's no creatures that... I, I actually don't think there's any creatures Gabby can play early to, that, actually can, that actually get pumped up from the map the waste ability. Uh, the offshoot. The, like the one mana ocean. Oh, right. One yeah. four jetty offshoot. That's, that's not right. bad. I, it can kill like goblin tokens, so that's not yeah, terrible. Yeah. Blocks, uh, uh, blocks, blocks, the, um, blocks the warden. Yeah, that's true. Archangel of Ty is coming over. Um, Wingmate Rock. Oh. This is actually a pretty aggressive draw, but I, I, <laughs> I mean, this but is. Gabby's like, about to play Ugin. <laughs> yeah, like if, if, this is aggress if this is as aggressive as Sean can be, and this is kind of what you mentioned. Like, I, I feel like this is honestly as aggressive as his deck can be. Like, turn two, Rattleclaw, turn three thing, turn four thing, and Ugin's already here and it's going to kill the entire board. Is this a turn five Ugin? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, you know, at the, at the minute, like, you know, Gabby doesn't have anything else going outside of this Ugin, but this Ugin's probably going to be enough. I'm not sure there needs to be anything else outside of this yeah. Ugin. Ooh, Sean did draw Archangel Tithes. That'll be helpful right now. Five toughness is good. Can't shoot it down. But, you know, if, if Gabby draws anything ever, then it's bad news. Yeah. Sanctum of Ugin is fine right now. It's not anything too special, I don't think. Yeah. yeah. At this point, Gabby just needs to draw a fatty. But I actually okay. think, um, you know, if Gabby just continues to whiff, um, I mean, the Archangel, the Archangel does kind of outrace the Ugin because... Gabby has to continue taking up the Ugin, but Sean's just going to continue attacking the Ugin, and it's three for two. So with two hits, it'll actually die. Okay, all right. Well, that means we need a good draw. That's all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot of great draws in Gabby's deck. Yeah, that's, that's the scariest thing about playing against a ramp deck, right? Like, you talked about the Hellkite deck that you've played before, and we've seen, like, Valica decks and stuff like that. They just thin their entire deck of all their lands, and then just hoping to hit, you know, their big payoff cards. So another Ugin... Um, the Eldrazi's. That's all it takes to probably get this game over with. So I don't think Sean really has too much incentive here to play a creature because Gabby is just going to continue to tick up the Ugin. So I think Sean's, you know, he's actually chose not to play a creature because I think his best option here is to activate Blighted Woodland, go up to six lands, play Nissa, then flip the Nissa and try to get some value okay. maybe. Okay. <laughs> that is a large hanger back, Walker. Uh, it's pretty big. Will this... Will this just trigger the Sanctum? That's what I was, I was thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> Right yeah. now, is does this trigger the Sanctum? I think it does, because I think it's when you cast a colorless creature with converted mana cost seven or less. This, this is a gigantic hanger back walker. Yeah, if this triggers it, okay, yeah. Oh, now, oh, yeah. Okay, this is bad news. This is very, very bad news. 
Yeah, that means Ulamog is going to come to town. Does Sean even have a main main deck answer to Ulamog? Stasis Let's Snare? See. He's got exactly two Stasis... Oh, yes, two Stasis Snares and one Quarantine Field. Uh, well, it's good to have outs. Yeah, <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> but... I... Oh, man. It's good to have outs. That's probably the largest hangerback walker that's ever been hardcast. 6-6? Six, six? That's it's, the biggest it's one It's got to be seen. up there. Yeah, that's the biggest one I've ever seen. Maybe Jake has set the record at the Grand Prix, but yeah, as yeah, far I'm as sure. in my eyes in front of in my eyes in front of me, this is the biggest one I've ever seen. Have you guys actually have you actually seen this deck in action before? No, this is the first game I've watched it. Like I saw that I saw that he top eight at the Grand Prix and saw the deck list, and I'm just like, this is really cool. This deck probably has some really good matchups and some really bad matchups. And like the one he's playing against right, the one that Gabby's playing against right now, seems like a pretty good matchup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This uh, this deck was actually. Um, Created by Mike Sigrist. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was uh, he was brewing up a deck uh, while testing for the PT, and just came up with this sweet idea of a ramp deck. And he all he was very close to playing it because he was beating all the mid range decks, but he okay. just couldn't beat a red deck to save his life. And you know, as most of the team was actually on the red deck, he was just like, no, no, I'm not going to play a deck that loses to the team deck. Yeah, because this was the pro tour where people actually finally played red for once and kind of respected it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a, a welcome change. Didn't want to lose to it. He right, got, so, so, got Paulo to play red. <laughs> no, I, I thought Paulo was going to play Esper for sure. Or, <laughs> yeah, or at the very least, try to make a good Esper deck. I think he I, got 40 of his 50 pro points last year playing Esper Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> we got a flip Nissa. We got some Rattleclaw Mystics. All in. There's, yeah, no choice. Oh, okay. oh, oh my goodness. Yep. Yeah, well, I mean, we talked about it before. The ramp deck has some pretty awesome top decks, and uh, Sean, you know, if I if I were to just handicap this game, I feel like Sean's is like an eighty twenty dog or something. It's it uh, the way this one game is played out, it feels worse than that. But I think yeah. eighty twenty is probably appropriate. I mean, Sean had a great draw. He had yeah. turn two rattleclaw into turn three archangel into turn four wingmate rock. That's going to beat most decks. I just don't know. I, I don't know what draw is better. Elvish Visionary is the last draw. He's going to concede the game because, you know, can't beat Ulamog, can't beat Ugin, so why bother playing anymore? I, I, I don't know if there's a better draw. We'll, we'll take a look at the sideboard. Right. But this is so, this is so <laughs> hard. Well, Gabby already seems like she's pre-boarded in the matchup. Yep. If I were to guess, Gabby is likely going to take out the Jaddy offshoots because they don't really do anything. Yeah, this uh, matchup, not great. Everything else seems amazing. So, I, oh, Hangerback Walker is also mediocre, I think. So she could take some number of those cards out. And, I, and I'm assuming it's just, let's see, Seismic Rutcher is probably good. Right, uh, it token. seems okay. Like, rent, uh, the Fog could be okay. Winds of Qual Sism, I believe uh, it's pronounced. Kal, Kal, is that really how it's pronounced? I think it's like Qual Sisma, maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah, that that's yeah. That I better? thought maybe there was some some strange like it's in a textbook <laughs> or something, and you're just like it's it's not exactly how it looks. But yeah, I would guess that Gabby brings in Nissa Ulamog, um, potentially no Whisperwood Elementus probably not good, and then like ruptures and or winds of Calcismuck, and then she can just board out Jaddy offshoots and Hangerback Walkers. Yeah, I mean the stuff that she the, the stuff that she's gonna board out it, it's also bad. So yeah, I mean they're easy. very bad. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty easy to just get that stuff out of the deck, and then there's there's enough supplemental stuff to get into the deck. Uh, yeah, on this... Sean's side, there's like <laughs> nothing. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Sean decided to cut the blue entirely, so he doesn't have access to cards like disdainful. Like Patrick Dickman, for example, is playing a green white deck with a bunch of disdainful strokes in his sideboard. So okay. at least it gives you a fighting chance. You look at Sean's deck in green white. There's really nothing you can bring in out of the sideboard for this matchup. Hidden Dragon Slayer? No. I, I mean, yes, but... Qu a Quarantine Field? Some Stasis Snares? Like... You're bringing in a bunch of reactive cards. Yeah. It does, I, I, can, I can imagine Sean... You, like, you can see Sean saying he's got a Stasis Snare already. Like, I can imagine him just drawing a bunch of stuff that's too reactive. I guess Gabby can get Mana Screwed. As you, Gabby, it looks like Gabby has zero green sources in her I think hand. there's a... F one, two, three... I think there's, there's one forest. It's kind of... Oh, there is. It's hiding. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Never mind. The hand's great. Yeah, hand's great. Yeah, and there's yeah. a man, there's a vegetation too. Yeah, this hand's really good. Oh, look at this, Sean with the nut draw again. Do you think he can get there this time? Warden into Rattleclaw. I don't know. Return to Amiria deals a lot of damage pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, this is a great curve. This might be doable. Yes. Yeah, I mean, was Sean, the- Sean was on the draw last game, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Being on the play world of difference here. Oh, yeah. But the thing is, if, if Gabby just boarded in, once again, just a couple of sweepers and maybe even the fog, that might be all she needs to just come ahead here. Dragon Lord of Tarka in hand now. That's your payoff card. That's a pretty good payoff card. Yeah. It does something, and then Stasis Snare has to kill it. So you get a little Enters the Battlefield triggered effect, which is nice. I wonder if Sean's just debating whether or not to just get in there. But I'm assuming he's just going to jam the Retreat here. Yeah. I mean, Retreat to Mary plus Fetch Land is pretty great. You deal one now, you deal a whole bunch more later. It's time to ramp. Which ramp spell are we casting? Pilgrimage? Yeah, at least Nissa's Pilgrimage is not like an embarrassing ramp spell. Map the Wastes. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> like, I would just never even consider that card when trying to brew for standard. You're just like, the deck doesn't work. I'm not playing this bad of a ramp spell. We can't no, afford to do this. Yes, I refuse. Yeah, I'm not casting Map the Wastes at the Pro Tour. Sorry. So another land, up to four mana. So... We'll have Drangler or Tarkin two turns. So I would guess that Sean's just, once again, going to get in for one here um, and then just make another token, play Wingmate Rock, and then if he draws a fetch land next turn, it's a that's ton a of damage. Yeah. This is a pretty good start. The, the, the unfortunate part for Sean and, is that Gabby's only down to 17. Right, but once again, if, if, Sean, if Gabby, for example, just casts an Explosive Vegetation next turn, and Sean draws a fetch land, he gets in for millions. That's, that, that's legal, I ran the numbers. I ran the numbers. I'm just, I'm just staring at the board. Yeah. Millions. Approximately <laughs> millions. You've done Let's the see. math. Yeah, well, okay, so there's six creatures times two. That's 12, 13, 14, 15, 21, 23 damage. Yeah, that's millions. Fetch that's land? basically millions. Oh, is that... Did I say 23? So 23 minus six is 17. Well, you count pumping the warden? Oh, you can also pump the warden. Yeah. I, think I didn't is... even run the numbers on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I should be embarrassed. Slightly like, less than millions. If there's anything I should be good at, it should be running the numbers. <laughs> All right. Perhaps. <laughs> Did you count the amount of life <laughs> that Sean gets to keep? I think life is completely relevant. In okay. This. All right. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. All right. So there is an aggressive draw that does exist, and Sean didn't even need to cast any of the reactive cards. So his draw was aggressive enough, and he has a way to go about winning the game. But that was Sean on the play. Yeah. But once again, though, I mean that was that's Sean's perfect. That's Sean's ideal draw, right? One yeah. drop, rattle claw, retreat, fetch land. Yeah. And you know it's going to be so much harder for him to replicate that kind of draw. Whereas Gabby's deck is just her entire deck is just ramp spells into the fatties. And now that she's on the play, I think Sean's going to have a real difficult time coming back from this. Or winning it's, this game. It's probably going to be hard. It's probably I mean, gonna be. she could always just mulligan to five. I've seen, I've seen some ah, people do that. Already. The mulligan strategy. Yeah, yeah. I yes. mean, you should, you should have seen me in the back end. I was just like, five, five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A mulligan strategy. Uh. Everyone likes to employ it. <laughs> hey, we even have Jake Mondello in the chat. Being oh, on the yeah. play, very important, turns out. That doesn't surprise me. Because your ram spells cost three mana. Um, I, I okay. Oh, I have no idea how this deck beats a red deck. A ramp deck? Yeah, you start ramping on turn three. I mean, turn one Jaddy offshoot, turn two Jaddy offshoot, cast some pyroclasms. That's got to be your only way. Is yeah. the offshoot? I can't imagine beating a Tarka red. My goodness. Uh, a Tarka red is likely the deck's worst matchup, but um, I mean, you you know. A lot of people don't really opt to play like in a Tarka Red. I think Gabby made a pretty smart decision here. Because how many people are going to just be that guy? Be the bad person just uh, choosing to play the Tarka Red deck. Everybody wants to play deck. something sweet. Let's all just play mid-range decks and better man wins. Play some long Four games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <man>. <laughs> the better player wins. Yeah. Oh, uh, Retreat to Kazandu is... I don't even know if that... I probably butchered it, but Retreat to Kazandu is a card that I saw Raph Levy play in his Green Ramp Great Aurora deck. Really? So maybe that's a sweet card. All right, both players taking a mulligan here. Ooh, Sean's hand is really bad. <laughs> that, 
That hand is not keepable. That, yeah, you, I don't think that's keepable at all. There's, like, there's not even, I guess there can get canopy Vista, but... Yeah. Does, Gabin, does, does Gabby keep this hand? Well, she's on a little six, and I think that you have to, because it's a ramp deck, and ramp decks are so bad at mulliganing that going to five is just too much, probably. She gets a scry here, too. So. Yeah, it's like keeping eight. Yeah. Did Sean <laughs> keep this hand? Wow! Sean kept? Oh, man. So, you know, maybe, maybe he's thinking, I gotta get really lucky to win this match. So, I'm just gonna keep this hand. I'm gonna draw a Rattleclaw Mystic. Turn to a Gideon. Easy game. Alright. I, it's a pretty bold keep. If Radical Mystic comes rolling off the top, it works. It didn't. Looks like Gabby's uh, on pace for a turn six Ugin. That's probably going to be good enough. Given how slow Sean's hand is, yeah. Yeah. I think it's going to be more than good enough. And there's a Dragon Loader Tarka as backup. And Sean has no play on turn three. So yeah. Sean, this time without the ridiculous curve and... Gabby's hand just rampant fatties. This is kind of what you talked about, though, because the past couple of draws have just been big creatures. Like, sometimes you can get the wrong side of your deck. Exactly. It's working out fine now. Like, Explosive Vegetation's resolving. There's a bunch of lands in play. There's a Hedron Archive in hand that's going to be cast. But sometimes you can get the wrong side. But the reason why this matchup is so bad for Sean is Sean just can't even deal, if, deal with one big threat. You yeah. know, a lot, of, a lot of decks have the ability to be like, okay, you played this one card. I'll kill it. Hopefully you draw no more large creatures and we're go we're good. But Gabby just plays one Ugin. Sean's just dead, pretty much. Pretty much. It took him infinite to get through the first one in game one. Tur blazing out the gates with a turn four Gideon. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got you to gotta start somewhere. Yeah. So, so we're probably going to have an archive, and, archive and a Pilgrimage. Yep. He does and not have I Spell Mastery, so it's only two for us. So, so Nilsa's Pilgrimage is a Kadama's Reach for two forests. But with Spell Mastery, you get three forests? Yeah, you get correct? three. Yeah. Three uh, basic forests. Right. Important. Can't search for dual lands or anything. So Sean's got an interesting... Like, is Sean so afraid of Ugin at this point that he kills the Hedron Arc? No, no, he can't do that because... Because Gab, uh, he, he knows that Gabby has a forest in, in her hand, so yep. Gabby can just play the forest and she'll still have eight mana. Wait, the Sanctum of Ugin tap for two? Oh, no, no, it does not. It does not. One, two, three. I mean, there will be seven mana, but I, like, Sean could play Quarantined Field and take care of the, he, the, the Hedron Archive, but I don't know if that does anything. Yeah, I, I th Sean probably has to sandbag it. Wait till Gabby drops an Ugin, play the Quarantine Field, and hope that Gabby has no other way to deal with it. Yeah. And, you know, Gabby obviously has the Ulamog in her hand. Answers aplenty. Do you retreat here, or do you just play Wingmate Rock? I... So if I was, if I was Sean, I would just play Wingmate Rock and just act like there's no Ugin over there, because I don't think I can beat one. Just pretend it doesn't exist. Like, the card yeah, doesn't just, exist. It doesn't exist. It's not in your deck. You're never going to draw it. So let's just not... Let's not even play pretend. You just... There's not one. So... No, no you don't have it. Nope. 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 I refuse no to Ugin. believe. What is Ugin? What card are you talking even talking is about? Is that a card? Is that what is You mean I have Ugin? Yeah. I have <laughs> you would know about I have Ugin. Yeah, a good friend of mine. I, I thought I you know I could I, I I thought you were gonna play Tron. I thought you were gonna play in Tron in the modern Super League. I thought about it. Patrick got to me. Peace Sully got to me. Yeah, what yeah, yeah. Looks looks like the decision was correct. <laughs> it would have been pretty sick too if like the deck list weren't revealed, because I think people would just put you on Tron. So they might keep some pretty strange hands against you there. That's actually kind of why I played a different deck, because I thought everyone would just assume I'd play Tron. And then when I looked at the deck list, no one had sideboard here for Tron. So, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah no one had actually anything. been a good choice. Yeah, it would have been actually good. I still would have probably lost to Patrick Dickman, but you know, I can't ever beat his deck or him, so that's just part <laughs> of life. Fair. Ugin time! So it looks like... No, oh, no, it's, uh, it's Strangler Tarka time. Actually, she, uh, she can play Ugin. Oh, Ug oh yeah. So just kill Gideon, yeah. I think. Reasonable. And have an 88 left behind. Yeah. It's a rough life. I guess that's not bad. I mean, playing an Ugin there and minusing it for four also seems incredibly powerful. I think, she's short, of, I think she's short of mana. Sanctum of Ugin doesn't tap for mana? There's six uh, forests, a mountain, and a Sanctum oh, of Oh, no, Ugin. you're right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. My bad. 
I'm stupid. Unless that's not six forests. No, it is because there's a okay. there's like a zero and then a six next to it. Sure. So that's like the cheat code on Magic Online. It helps it you. Tells you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. kind of tells you a little cheat code. So yeah, there's eight. But either I think either is fine because like now you get a. Clock you know what? Out I'm, there. I'm just gonna retire from running the numbers because I've. I've <laughs> Just failing every single time. You're just having a bad moment of running the numbers. Just, yeah, math just too hard right now. Just right now, it's kind of late. It's like eight twenty-two. You, you know, know, Sean might have a chance if Gabby just thinks she has seven lands and play the whole game. <laughs> that is that's that's, that's his the, out at this that's point. That's the new out. <laughs> that's the new out. We found the new out. We're finding different <laughs> outs here for Sean. That's good. <laughs> Ugin doesn't exist. That's one. Yep. But, but have eight mana. I think there's a very decent chance that. I mean, there's a there's a decent chance of what? I don't know. Maybe maybe yeah. maybe Gabby cast the Nissus Pilgrimage here. Just need some more lands. Want to get to that Ulamog? Yeah. I, for oh, some okay, reason, okay, I, okay. for some reason, All I don't right. think that's gonna happen. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. Sure is it this? a must? Is it a must on the sacrifice? I can't imagine it's a must. That would be pretty bad drawback. I would be. Yeah, I would be <laughs> blown away if you had to. Ugin, kill the board. I like this deck. Like there's just, like this amazing. doesn't this doesn't surprise me that someone finally found the ramp deck. Like a lot of people tried like green white Eldrazi and a bunch of other stuff and it just was like not very good. But someone like the tools are there for ramp. You just had to get a little bit more creative. Yeah, a lot of people I've noticed also in those ramp decks are trying to playing cards like Oblivion Sower, but this card just this deck just doesn't have any of that going on. Yeah. I don't I don't think Oblivion Sower is very good. It doesn't have any. I, I, I'm at, the the cards that this deck gets to play to make it work, or, or you know, it was finding the diamonds in the rough, right? Like the offshoots and the, uh, <laughs> the map of waste. Like it's it's finding the diamonds in the rough to somehow. That make is it. real rough. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, was, was, was Ugin good there? It was it was above average card. Yeah. Above average card. We we call that in the magic business. We call that a bad matchup. That's what that, that is. is. A very, very bad matchup, yes. Bad matchup, yeah. So Gabby Sparts are going to win the match over Sean McLaren. And now that means we have to bring another match and some more casters to the table. So uh, this was fun. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed myself. It was short. It was to the point. I didn't think that match was going to take very long, and I'm not surprised to see Gabby win. But uh, this was, So let's see who we got coming on deck. I'll get a look here. Uh, Gabby and Sean are going to come on, and then uh, Kenji and Patrick are going to play. Kenji, my son, my uh, boy. Yes. <laughs> we have it's a matchup, classic matchup here, classic standard matchup. We have Dark Jess guy against okay. Bant Megamorph. Oh, all right. This is going to be probably a long one then. Yeah, I'm sure you've done so, you've done plenty of these matchups already. I have a couple, so everyone's going to have to <laughs> buckle down and get ready for the next match here. Well, uh, Mr. Chion, that was a blast. Congratulations on your win. I had a lot of fun in those uh, two and a half games we played. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the first two games were pretty sweet, to be fair. No, those were actually a lot of fun. I'm gonna. I'm really looking forward to going back and watch and watching round two, like really bad. I'm gonna do it after, like once I get archived and everything, because like I probably screwed up a bunch. And I just want to know what mistakes I made. Yeah. It was fun. Raptor was watching my match, so I'm just gonna ask him. I'm sure he because he'll just make all the right plays. I just be like, Raptor, so what I do wrong? He'll yeah, just do like so everything. Smart. It must be nice to have someone so smart to go to. I just have yeah. me. He runs the numbers a little bit better than I do. <laughs> Currently, yes, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, uh, I think we're taking a commercial break here. When we come back, there will be uh, there will be a Gabby Sparks and a Sean McLaren in the booth. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody.